Hello friends, welcome to 6th video of the 12th physics animation series. In the last video, we explained Coulomb's force and learned about the factors on which the magnitude of the Coulomb force between two charges depends. However, we know that force not only has magnitude but also direction, which means that force is a vector quantity. In today's video, we will understand the vector form of Coulomb's force. Before understanding the vector form, it is essential to recall some basics of vectors. Generally, we study two types of physical quantities. First, scalar quantity. Any physical quantity that has magnitude and no direction, we call it scalar quantity. Examples include mass, charge, temperature, distance, etc. Second, vector quantity. Any physical quantity that has magnitude as well as direction, and follows the triangle law of vector addition, we call it a vector quantity. Examples include force, displacement, acceleration, etc. So, if we want to represent a vector quantity like force in equation form, we write force equals the magnitude of force into the unit vector of force F cap, which indicates the direction of force. We can also write it in different ways like this. Similarly, if we have a vector quantity like the displacement vector r, we can represent it in similar ways. Now let's come back to our topic, vector form of Coulomb force. So let's assume that we have two charges, q1 and q2, and their distance is denoted by the displacement vector r. If we denote the displacement vector between charge q1 and charge q2 as r21, indicating the direction when we move towards the second charge, from the first charge. Conversely, when we move in the opposite direction, we denote it as R12. Now, if we assume that both charges are of the same sign, then there will be a repulsive force between them. As a result, the force on the second charge caused by the first charge will be towards the right. We will call this force F21. Similarly, the force exerted on the first charge by the second charge will be directed toward the left. We will call this force F12. As we have seen, we can write the vector form of force F as the magnitude of the force vector multiplied by the unit vector F cap, which indicates the direction of the force. In the previous video, we learned that the magnitude of the Coulomb force is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 q2 by r square, where epsilon naught is the vacuum permittivity. Now, if we consider the force acting on the second charge due to the first charge, we see that direction of the force is along the vector r21. We can write the unit vector of this force as r21 cap, and we get the vector form of the force acting on the charge q2 due to charge q1. Similarly, if we consider the force acting on the first charge due to the second charge, we can write its unit vector as R12 cap, which indicates the direction of the force. Now, we have the vector forms of both forces, F21 and F12. If we ignore the unit vectors R21 cap and R12 cap for a moment, the remaining equations are the same. However, we know that R21 cap and R12 cap are opposite to each other. Therefore, if we replace R12 cap with minus R21 cap, we can see that F12 is equal to minus F21. This shows that the force acting on both charges is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. This is the vector form of Coulomb's force. However, we can see that this equation contains terms involving unit vectors. Let's convert it into the complete vector form. So, if we look at the equation of force F21, we can also write R square as the square of the magnitude of vector R21. At the beginning of the video, we learned about some basics of vectors and mentioned that a unit vector can also be represented as vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. Therefore, we can also write R21 cap as R21 vector divided by the magnitude of R21 vector. Let's place this into the F21 equation. 
Now we have the square of magnitude of R21 multiplied by magnitude of R21 in the denominator. We can also write this as the cube of the magnitude of vector R21. Similarly, we can also modify the equation for force F12 where we can replace R square with the square of magnitude of the R12 vector and write the unit vector R12 cap as R12 vector divided by the magnitude of R12 vector. We will get a similar equation for force F12. Now, let's represent R12 and R21 in a different way. We have two charges, Q1 and Q2 in space. If we talk about Q1, it has position in space that we denote by the position vector R1 from the origin. Similarly, Q2 also has a position in space that we denote by the position vector R2. We also know the concept of vector addition, where the vector R1 plus vector R21 equals R2. This equation can be written as R21 equals R2 minus R1. Similarly, the vector R12 can be written as R1 minus R2. Let's now place the values of the position vectors R12 and R21 in the equation for the force and get the complete vector form of column force. Okay, so far we have seen that the force between two charges is equal and opposite. But what happens if we have more than two charges in space? Let's talk about the force between multiple charges. Suppose we have four charges Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. If we consider any two individual charges, the force between them will be equal and opposite, will be independent of the presence of any other charges. However, if we focus on any one charge, say Q1, we can find out how much force it is experiencing. We know that the Coulomb force acts along the line joining two charges. So the force on Q1 due to Q2 denoted by F12 Similarly, the force on Q1 due to Q3 denoted by F13 and the force on Q1 due to Q4 denoted by F14 will also act on Q1. The question is, which force is actually affecting Q1, F12, F13 or F14? The answer lies in the superposition principle, which states that the force on an individual charge is the vector sum of the forces acting on it due to all other charges around it. Therefore, the force on Q1 denoted by F1 will be equal to F12 plus F13 plus F14 and so on. In the place of F12 vector, we can use the complete vector equation, which is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 vector R12 divided by the cube of the magnitude of vector R12. Similarly, we can also do it for F13 and F14. Or we can also express the forces in terms of unit vectors. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.